when I was using traditional plates, I would avoid larger movements. Why? So technically speaking. Technically, the plates are, are weaker because you have to bend the plates in the operating room and that deforms the plates and it makes them weak. So that's one component is the rigidity of the fixation. Don't you actually have some traditional plates I here? I do. So here's, for example, uh, a Laforte plate. This is a tradition. It's not what I'm using now, but this is what I used 10 years ago. Yeah, just the way you're holding it is perfect, right? by the way. This is 10 light. years ago. And this is something that can easily be bent with my fingers, right? And then when you bend it with these pliers that I have here to get the form that you want, it's it's already weakened from this this plate that I can weaken itself. So it's that, like a paperclip. If you bend it enough times, it breaks. Exactly, exactly. So I think that the tr the older style plates have are weaker, and that that in itself um, poses a risk for larger movements that require more fixation. And then the other part of it is that the older technology doesn't really allow for a predictable, stable result or outcome compared to what a custom can do. So for example, if you're making a large movement, like today we made a large movement, um, you can see there's a lot of- It was 17 17 the, millimeters at the Pagonion, right? With a large eight degree counterclockwise rotation. There's a lot of tension in the tissues um, that uh, without knowing the exact position and getting passive a passive place to it if you're using without the information to get a passive position predictable and stable in the right place and in combination for a weaker plates you're at much greater risk of failing mm -hmm. right of of having relapse we, we used to call it relapse yeah I don't, I don't call it relapse anymore i call it immediate not what you wanted right you taught me something earlier today. Actually, you did this in the surgery. Because it was such a dramatic mandibular advancement, yep. the biggest problem with bold mandibular advancements is the tension that's created. Right. And you were telling me um, about how you had to release some soft tissue yep. in order to make that stable and reduce the risk of relapse. Right. Um, can you talk about what you did in that patient to make the site a little bit more passive yeah. to hold the mandible in that new position? Yeah, definitely. So the mandible, the lower jaw is the mandible. It's encased in different layers of soft tissue. The first layer that's on the bone is called periosteum. And it's a tight layer of, of tissue. It's pretty tight. And it's like a glove, right? Uh, on is a it, hand. Is it bone or is it? No, it's a connective tissue. Okay. Yeah. And it's, it's, it lines the jaw and it's tense, right? Outside of that, there's muscle, there's fat, there's ligaments. Um, and what it creates is a envelope of tissue. Now, when you make this cut here and you move this apart and you bring that jaw forward, even though you're separate here, even though you're separate here, as you bring this forward, the envelope is still connecting the entire jaw. It's like a rubber band of soft tissue that's trying right. to close that, that BSSO gap Correct. that you created that's being held for Correct. open so by the plate. Even though the bone is separate at the time, the two components are not entirely separate because the envelope is still hugging it all. And what that does is for larger movements, that tension will bring this segment forward outside the TMJ. It'll distract it down. And it'll be tense when you're feeling it. So a surgeon can easily think that he's in the position he planned when in reality, he's just opening the jaw forward. Dislocating, dislocating the, condyle the, forward. the condyle forward because that envelope is pulling it down. So that's a huge, per, huge factor or um, benefit of custom plates is the reference of the plates like you saw today, gives me that information if I actually have the right position or not. Yeah, this advancement is not coming from forward dislocation of the of the, of condyle, the condyle in that whole segment. Right. It's actually coming from the gap being appropriately sized. Correct, and the only way to really know that is to have that reference from a custom plate. Yeah. Otherwise, it's impossible. There's no way to know it because the feel, the tissue can be so tight especially for a large movement that you feel like you're up against the right place where in reality, you're just up against an envelope that's stretched. Yeah. 
you know? Yeah. So I think, I think that in those situations, the custom play tells me that I'm not there yet and I have to do some more work and that more work, usually there's very strong ligament attachments and tendon attachments at the gonial angle here, right, for the masseter right muscle, here. yep, and the pterygoid muscle, and they're really tense fibrous tissues, so I uh, often have to go back and release the attachment of those. What do you mean by release the attachment of those? Um, strip it off the bone. You you just take it, peel it right off. Off, yeah, just which push people it outside probably the like, bone. wait, you can't do that. But yeah, absolutely, you can yeah, do I that. I mean, you you have to expose the bone anyways. When you're exposing the bone, you're moving the periosteal layer off the bone. This is just going to areas where there are tighter attachments and doing the same. And it's the same thing on the medial side. There's the stylohyoid ligament, the stylomandibular ligament. They're coming from these areas and they're very tense. And sometimes I'll have to release those. But before I started to use custom, I didn't really understand that um, because I couldn't understand that. Instead, we wondered why there was this immediate relapse in some cases. And now I know is from the envelope that was fighting that. But now I have that information to prepare the jaws ready for that final position um, because of the information that we have. And it allows me to make larger movements predictably, safely, and uh, with stability. Mm -hmm. And if you remove the soft tissue from the bone, it'll just, um, so you've relieved the tension and now you've plated the lower jaw forward. And so then how does that heal? Yeah, so now the soft tissue drape will reattach to the new position and form new ligament tendon attachments. And it'll heal in and that? And it'll heal in that position, but it has to be passive when you're fixating it. It's not going to heal with tension. If, yeah, with tension, it's going to start pulling everything back or even putting you right away in the wrong position. Yeah.